Alrighty. Hi guys, this is Sam. And today we are back with another guide video on PDR and IED. Now, what PDR is, it's percent defense reduced, I believe, and IED would be ignore enemy defense. But basically they just mean the same thing, which is this number right here in this stat window. Now, this number is crucial because for most boss num bosses, you know, like HMAG and CRA and onwards, but even, you know, things like Halux and even Horntail, you know, Horntail, Zacum, all the bosses, they all have some kind of defense. Now, if you Google them, if you look them up on, say, MapleWiki, it'll say, you know, for example, Seville has 300% defense. Now that makes no sense because you're like, oh, how, how can a defense be a percent? This is how. So pretty much the idea behind PDR as far as players are concerned are that the calculations are 1 minus 1 minus x times 1 minus y and so forth and so on. Now what x and y are be are each individual sources of PDR. Now I forget the exact formula because there's a formula, I think it's like 1 minus uh, that entire quantity, but regardless the takeaway from the formula is that PDR is reverse multiplicative. Now what that means is for every single source of PDR that you have, the next source of PDR is going to affect your total PDR less than with the previous one. So say you have you know, 30% PDR, and then you got 30% PDR. And then the next line that you get is also 30% PDR. That line won't get you to 60%, that would be additive. It'll get you to, say, 55%. You know, because it'll multiply in a certain way that'll give you a little bit less every single time. So when you get to around 90% PDR, it's really, really difficult to gain even 1% PDR because by the time you've already multiplied so many different sources of PDR, that is quite um, just difficult. Now, what concerns players is, you know, people have figured out, how do I get PDR and where do I get PDR? Because eventually you will get enough PDR to do things, but the most common ways of getting PDR is three things, or I should say four things. Uh, number one, being the Leafry Codex. Now this is actually the most complicated, in my opinion, because nobody really knows about this uh, when you're just starting up. So what the co Codex is, is if you open your Codex, that is not the Codex, whoops. There we go, that's the Codex. I'm sure you've all been introduced to this when you first play out the game and they tell you to pick up the cards. Now, usually you just go to Familiar, but I wanted you to check out the Set tab for a second. So if you go to your second page of the set tab, go to Leafry, and here you'll see all the cards that you need to complete the Leafry set. Now the good thing about Leafry set is you get 30% PDR, and all these mobs you can find, you know, if you go straight over to Leafry, so for example if I just go to main info, oh, can't go there, if I just go to Leafry, right, here you'll see all of the mobs that you can possibly imagine for Leafry. And what you need to do to get the set is just go to every single mob, kill it enough times, or kill it until it drops the monster card. And you just get every single one in this area. Now the key ones that are difficult will be Horntail. You need to do normal Horntail and only normal Horntail to get the card. Chaos does not drop the card. So just, you know, take a day off dailies and do normal Horntail. And the other thing would be the Leviathan. It's not pronounced the Leviathan, it's actually Leviathan. But you go to the Wyvern Cannon, as I'm showing you right here. Drop down to the bottom. And on your bottom left, you'll see a little root thing. Press up on it, as if it were a portal. And you'll spawn in a map, and you'll see either Leviathan up here, or as you saw earlier, right down here. Now you can just one-shot it really easily, like so. Boom, and there you see the card, right? Now, I already have it, so I don't want to let my pet lead everything. But that's the second card that's very, very difficult. So now you have, you know, all your regular mobs. 
these are these you can find. Maiden and Griffey, you know, you also can find in these two forests, uh, respectively. They will spawn on a two hour timer, I believe. So just keep CCing and eventually you will see one. Just make sure when you actually get into the map, you need to actually kill a mob or two to try to force it to spawn. So he doesn't have one right now. Let's say if I kill one, and there you go, there's Griffey. If you're an explorer, you should already be familiar with this because you have to do this for your fourth job advancement as well. So it could be a good opportunity to get your card when you're there. And that's a hacker. Okay. <laughs> Let's get out of there before it's, it's too late. Now the last thing that you need to do, and this is definitely the most difficult part of the leaf reset, is the last couple of cards. Now, all these mobs again, you can get them normally, made in Griffey and Revelathan and Horntail. Now these two cards, Dragonor and the Dragon Rider, they're both found in the Dragon Rider PQ. This is one of the most infamous PQs in MapleStory. And the reason being, you know, you gotta go through a bunch of pre-quests. I believe you talk to this guy first, he can also be found in the party quest event hall. If not, you know, he is part of the pre-quest, I just don't know if he's the first one. But you have to talk to him, or you can go straight to your beloved chief Tatama in Leafry. If you spawn in Leafry, it's literally right above your head. That old guy that you see right about here. And he'll give you a quest. Now make sure you don't take the ancient dragon wing scales quest. This is not related. This is, I believe, to a mount. And it will force you to spend 50 mil for no good reason. So I wouldn't bother. But the other quest that also says like ancient you know, dragon wings. You'll see the difference, just avoid this one by all costs and do the other one all the way down and you should eventually finish the quest. You basically just alternate back and forth between this guy and the guy we just saw earlier. And let's just go back to him for a second. And once you finish all the pre-quests, you know, you finish it, talk to this guy again and he will give you a very special skill that you need for this pre-quest. Uh, for this party quest, which is the soaring skill. Now the soaring skill allows you to fly. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to, you know, fly in the sky? No, you can. This this skill only works, you know, in this map and the party quest maps. But this skill is essential for you to get into the party quests and to actually complete it, get kill the two bosses, loot the cards, and so forth and so on. Now, do, to actually do the party quest, you need a party of three. But most people, if you ask them, I'm sure they'll come. come. If, if you can't, you know, find people. Be sure to join the Discord. I'm pretty sure there's still a good number of people who haven't done it yet. So be sure to check that out. Now, on the other hand, you want to be careful that you, when using this skill because it is prone to disconnection. Now, what I mean by that is, you know, if you try to attack mode in it, you'll be fine. But if you try to move and attack at the same time, there is this there's this very very small chance, but there is still a chance that you might DC because Nexon thinks you're hacking. So just be very careful about that. And I just forgot, I didn't open my boxes today. But anyway, that's how you do the, um, the Leaf Free Codex. And that's really the most complicated part of getting PDR. The other versions would be, you know, to roll PDR lines on your weapon, emblem, and secondary, and, um, wait, weapon, emblem, and secondary. Now what I would recommend is between the three of them, you only want to roll one line of PDR being you know 30% or 35% PDR, preferably on the emblem, but as long as you have a combination of boss attack and PDR line, you should be okay. Now also take note of the two 15% PDR nebs. These you can find just by massive farming. I found quite a few 15%, I've also found an 18%, but you do want to save that for endgame. Um, but for the most part, you know, they're pretty common. Well, as common as it is for a neb, I should say. And you want to put that to your secondary first. And if you have extras, you know, feel free to put it on your weapon. But make sure that your weapon is, you know, going to stay with you for a very long time, because it is quite useful. And that's the major sources of PDR. Now, the one last thing that's pretty recent, you know, besides your luminous link skill, fifteen percent PDR at level two, which is level one twenty, you also can access uh, the old character card system. Now. By the time of this video, the character card system in GMS will no longer exist, but what has taken its place is the infamous Legion system. Now you can 
get PDR from the grid, obviously, ignore defense. But the other thing that you want to look out for are the two characters that give PDR, being the Beast Tamer for 3% PDR, and if I can find it, the Blaster as well. I think I skipped it. That's Mechanic. Uh, there we go. Blaster, 3% PDR. Now keep in mind, you know, it's not additive, PDR is not additive. So the difference between 30% PDR and 35% PDR line on your weapon, it's still 5%, but that difference is much, much bigger than, say, this 6%, because this 6% is consisting of, you know, just 6%. So you'll be multiply, uh, multiplying 1 minus 0 0.06 and multiplying it around. But basically, you want to get all your sources of PDR, but don't stress out too much about you know this versus you know say a line on your emblem or say your PDR nebs or definitely into you know, the codex. Now, the other things that you want to look out for, which should already be in your equip list, but if it isn't already, uh, CRA does not give PDR in the set effect, but each of its items does give PDR in the hat five ten percent, top and bottom five percent each, and in the weapon for all endgame weapons, Absolab, Fafner, Sweetwater. 10% PDR, if I can show you right now, 10%, and Sweetwater Claw, 10%. This applies to all weapons, Arcane Shade Umbra, Arcane Umbra as well. Uh, set effects, also Galax, 30% PDR for 4 set effect. Superior Galax is 30%, I believe Reinforced is 15%, but when you're still getting Reinforced, you shouldn't be too concerned about PDR. And I believe that's it. I'm pretty sure that's it. Now, of course, your pencil ear set and your absolute up set, you know, for the later set effects, you can also get 10% PDR from there. Pencil ear, if I can show you, don't have any on me, but pencil ear does have a 10% uh, PDR set effect. Most equips do have some set effect that's PDR, but when you're still equipping them, it's not really significant because PDR, uh, you need quite a bit to make a very big difference, and it's bingo time actually. But <laughs> I do want to go to bingo. But the moral of the story is you, know, you want to get as many sources of PDR as you can. And to actually use PDR, what you need is you need 90% for the first three CRA, being Queen, uh, Pierre, and Von Bot. 93 for anything beyond Seville. So Seville, HMAG, uh, actually not even HMAG, just Seville, Lotus, Damien, Lucid. 93 to 95 is ideal. Otherwise, you risk, you know, having too much PDR and trying to focus on attack instead. And bingo, I started. Uh, <laughs> I do really love bingo. Um, but for 90% PDR, you want to go for Pierre, Von Bon, Queen, as I mentioned. Also, HMAG is 90% recommended. Helix, 90% recommended. And basically, that kind of tier of bosses. Cygnus, stuff like that, 90% is perfectly fine. And anything below that, PDR does make a difference, but it's not the biggest difference in the world. Keep in mind, 1% PDR on your stat window, it could mean 3-6% to final damage, depending on what boss you're fighting. So just be very aware of that. But now it is time for bingo, and I will see you guys in the next video. Ciao!